Anything on your mind? Anybody? Before we get started? Are you okay? Must be something going around. Maybe it's just like midterm flu. Mm -hmm. I think Luke Cage is sick. Yeah, Luke Cage. <laughs> I'm on the back end of it. Yeah, recovery. Yeah, that's right, you were coffee and bees. Fuhansi. Maybe it's like change of season. I just you know, cycle around. Okay, any questions? I'm going to do some uh, tricky nouns here in a second. And then we're going to shift to uh, modifying nouns again. And then we're going to do Direction and locational things. <clears throat> Maybe you guys have something to draw on. Maybe not. Two out of three. Two out of three. Yeah, you can draw the board. Okay, fine. And those of you guys online, uh, we're going to draw a couple things today just for fun. Okay, so if there's no questions, we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, so we're going to continue practicing. So, you know, you're building your internal database of nouns, and so you're able to name all these different things in Clinkit. Uh, and so one of the tricks, I think, is practicing things that sound very similar, and we've talked about a few of these already. Uh, and some of these, it's interesting, and, and I'll talk about them when we get to them. I'll share my screen so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Some of these are actually interchangeable in certain places. Or, you know, when you get into some of the dialect uh, deals, sometimes uh, it's different when you go to different places. So starting on the top, these are things that come in triplets where they're sort of, they're easy to confuse with one word or the other. And these are just good to practice so that you're getting these sets of things that, that sound very similar and it's just sort of advanced sound practice. And it's just kind of fun. And we'll just do each of these probably once, just so we can push through them and move on to something else. But I just want to start with this, and we're continuing to build a vocabulary on the top left here. <coughs> Chalk. 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 Day. 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 So the large owl with tufts, isn't there only one bird that has that? What's that? Isn't there only one bird that has that? The great horned owl? Yeah, it's the great horned owl. So I guess that's what you could say is it's a great horned owl. But I think a snowy owl has tufts as well. I always just think that's just owl. Yeah, well, there's the, there's the little owls, and those are different. Those ones are and they've got a very spiritual, I think they both do, but especially that little one. It's a very spiritual creature in Klingon. And then for some speakers, like up in Klakwan, Sisk is a moose. And so I don't know if they're, I don't know if they get reversed in certain cases. I don't, they're so similar that there might be something to that, but I, I haven't heard. Uh, maybe they were the same word. Maybe they were the same thing a long time ago. Eek. 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 So this is a directional term. We're going to talk about these today. This is towards the beach. <laughs> Goon. 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 So these two are identical, but one of them would have some sort of, like you would say, a goon, on goon. So the name for angoon contains this word, which means a point, an isthmus is what they call it. It's a longer point of land that you can cross over. 
Quat, 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 quat. It's very similar. Lots of, there's a few funny stories about it. Heen, 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 heen. Kahwe, 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 kahwe. So tech is to twist something. Tech is to pound something. This verb does come up, the tech verb comes up in the uh, story about the Battle of Sitka. Because there was a hammer, heads were smashed. Kayek. 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 Kunach. Kunach. Kanach. Kanach. Kudach. Kudach. Ak. 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 Those all probably come from the same thing. And it's also <coughs> like body. Suck. 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 Oops. DeVale's Club. I never liked that name anyway. Sook. 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 Did you ever find? Oh, so I was looking up that chewing ribs, wasn't I? Yeah. No, I'll do it. I'll work on it tomorrow. Sheikh. Sheikh. A cheeky. A cheeky. Sheikh. Sheikh. Let <laughs> me make a couple notes. What do you call it in Shingit when, like, you know how the clouds they'll sort of sit in the valleys and then they like get they like sort of drag across the top of the trees, you know, as they move. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't know what you call that. Let's see, a little line. When they're kind of moving? Yeah, like how they move like across the very tops of the trees, you know? They look out and they sort of like, it's like they're kind of sticking to the trees a little bit. OK. Making a couple notes. I will ask about that. Tomorrow's my day with the elders. And what do I have? <coughs> Ari Seal <coughs> and DeVale's Club. <laughs> Right, there was this lake in uh, South Dakota, and the translation in Lakota is Medicine Lake. So in English, they call it Devil's Lake. So I, like, I think I know. Hana, 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 Hana. Hock, 
Yen. 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 Those last two are homonyms. Is that would that maybe have stemmed from like the having a gamma or not having? It could be. So there's things like there is a N Y type of sound, and so it's like N. And so it could be with that, uh, but it certainly is with things like uh, shield or this direction term N. Like um, Hanya and mm -hmm. Sanya and Nanya, those all contain it. And there were some words that had one at the beginning, one at the end. And so sometimes you get five or six variations. Like if you look in the dictionary for the word lid, like a lid for a container, you'll we'll see a bunch of different variations. But it's because when the gamma gets lost, it gets various substitutions. And in this case, one of them could have been, and one of them, um, yeah. It could yeah. Yeah. Yay. 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 So you'll see yay in front of verbs with a high tone. <coughs> then you'll see yay with a low tone. And sometimes that low tone doesn't even necessarily mean downward. It's just it's a preverb that pops up in certain forms. Okay, so here's a bunch that have a whole bunch of similar sounds. Clock. 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 Clock, when we really watch tone and voweling. And these ones can all pop up in front of verbs. These, these are all verb related. So um, going back isn't too bad, but getting lost is usually bad. Running aground is usually bad. But it could be just running through some shallow water. Knock. 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 Black bear, and I just said it all wrong. I think I used belts, black bear, and daughter all in the same. <laughs> and it should have all been black bear. It was just all coming out. Seek, 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 seek. Oops, I didn't go tone. Seek, seek, seek. This is the one that he starts to move on. Which one? Shah. Oh. Shah. <laughs> Shah. It's, it's quite important for Mount Carver's trend. Yeah. And you keep calling it the woman's house. Oh, or right. Woman's mountain. Shah. Or the Shah. head mountain. It, they say Shah a hit on the Shah a hit. Oh, because a lot of people don't know. 
to do it the tone more. Sha. 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 Take, T T T T E T E T E T E T E T E T E T E T E T E T E T E T E T E T E T E T E T E Tukane, and it's <laughs> tukane. And so you would think you know, tukane might work because maybe it has something to do with this bottom or its butt, but it has to do with the cradle board. And same with needlefish. If somebody's name is needlefish, you always got to be real careful. <laughs> you know, a tone in it. Or there's a needlefish house. Be very careful. Oh, Plague. 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 These two I can never remember between these two. Cos 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 This should just be your final exam. Let's have you read this. <laughs> yeah. So this is like a steady leak, but it has to do a sort of, you know, and so sometimes breaking the word apart reveals sort of where the meaning comes from. It has to do with being a little bit rotten. There's also a similarity to, I think it's your kidneys, and that, because there's some sort of filtration that goes on through there, maybe. Uh, this one, there's two ways that it can be said. Kashukja. 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 And then kashukja is like, because it sounds like somebody's peeing, especially if they would say on a rock. So that one's usually kind of funny as well. But it's a type of drip that's very steady. Kukja. 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 And this is a drip that creates bubbles. And so kuk is um, in there, the bubble. Kokasja. Kokasja. And this is again this a steady stream of water, kind of like a waterfall. So now it's got this much more steady sort of leak. So if you were if, like a couple of weeks ago I was working on a plumbing project, I don't do very many house improvement projects. 
and we put our kids to sleep to like this white noise sound of like a running river or something. And it just was freaking me out because when you're working in plumbing, you're going to hear running water. It's a bad thing. So I've discovered. OK, any questions? OK, we're going to run through these real fast. Um, I will say the adjective, and then somebody give me a noun, and we'll just use it all together <coughs> as an example. Okay. And these ones come before the noun, just to keep it in mind. OK. 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 I claim douche. I claim douche. I claim douche. I claim douche. So again, we don't have to pluralize that. We just know there's lots of cats. I claim douche. I would. Good question. Many cat ladies? Cat, cat lady. Like a cat lady? A lady of, oh, yeah. Douche. What the ayat dot. I claim douche. Agu. Agu. Agu as. Agu as. Agu as. Ka. Ka. Baron Lion, want to give me a noun? Any noun? There should be an animal for this one. Anybody? Ka. Ka. One more time. Is it Kach? Any quiet here? We'll go with Okay, one more time, and I'm going to be quiet. Kadzisk. 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 Kunach. Kunach. Anybody? Cha asa. Cha asa. Kunak khalu. Yes. Myth? Ah. Kunak khalu. Kunak khalu. Okay. Sheesh. Kustin. Kustin. Now I'll give you this one. Kustin nak. Kustin nak. Because it was famous. Sing it. Sing it. The one off for now. Hog. Sing it. Hog. Sing it. Hog. The little ones. Sheech. 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 Cheech. Sheech. Cheech. Cheech, cheech, neech, cuck. <laughs> you know what? Cheech, cheech, neech, cuck. Should be. Maybe, maybe one would be on the beach, you know? Shuku. Shuku. <clears throat> Anyone? Shuku cake. Shuku cake. Tadgegi. 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 Two thousand and eight. I found it. There are certain combinations that are like if you say ka. That's a warrior, and, and for 
you know, a lot of old school clinkets, this is somebody who has been in actual combat. So in particular for clinket speakers who are also combat veterans, they, they might not want to see this used metaphorically to say like, I'm a warrior for my language or I'm a warrior for these principles. Sometimes it does specifically mean you've, you've potentially killed somebody for a, a cause. Yis, 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 and these ones come after. Quat, quat, ke quat, ke quat, 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 sucknin, quat, sucknin, quat, sick, sick, quayes, sick, quayes, sick, suck, 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 it, suck, it, suck. Sean. 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 Cake. Sean. Cake. Sean. This would also mean green. I should put that on there. There we go. So it's not just raw, but it's also green in Isn't terms of wood. Isn't that like a noun too? Shitsk. I hit. So there, there is. You could say shitsk, and that just means green wood. Like, like a sapling? And it could, yeah, a sapling. So, and one of those, you can really bend them. And there was a house, I think, that was... I think a, like a fort, too. Shitsk. Shitsk. Cake. 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 Wait, this one's coming after? Cake. 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 Tooch. Tooch, God, Tooch, God, Tooch, 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 Claim, Claim, Yawk, Claim, Yawk, Claim, Clink, Clink, Yawk, Clink, Yawk, Clink, Hook, Hook, Zisk, Tee, Hook, Zisk, Tee, Hook, Uwa, Wow. Chi chua. Chi chua. Yeti. Yeti. Nadok yeti. Nadok yeti. Yi yi. Yi yi. Du shat yi yi. Du shat yi yi. Yates. Yates. Chalk yates. Chalk yates. Now that one's a noun on its own. Okay, so we've done some of this stuff. We've talked about possession. Maybe after the break we'll do a little bit more of that. Uh, these rules of suffixes and how they work. Uh, going through, so we've got these three sort of orders moving left to right. The first slot is plural and diminutive, so we've got this and then we've got and you can only have one or the other. The second slot is the possessive or relational marker and then the second is what we'll call a locative or a relational suffix. So you can have up to three of them, but they can only be of these certain categories. And so, like you could say, day, and so that would have three of them. So, plural, e possessive, day, towards, towards my houses, right, because I'm Donald Trump. Yuck. <laughs> Uh, so we'll practice the X just looking at these forms. Just repeat after me. Hit. 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 Saw. 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 Can we do the diminutive? So these would be making them little. Hit, 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 saw, 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 cook, 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 te, te, take, take. Shit talk. 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 Shit tal
So you also see it's not really affecting tone. It'll make short ones go long, but they'll tend, they'll tend to stay high. If there ends up being a vowel, then the suffix starts changing. So there's a straight consonant suffix, there's a suffix that includes a vowel, and then there's a suffix that usually goes consonant, vowel, consonant. Would you have to say odd train chalk? Then say chalk. If you had many of many the, small vowels. Well, then you'd say chalk isan. Oh, oh so yeah. So then yeah. Okay. you can't do yeah. the x and the k together. I mean, it would be fun because then you could have. <laughs> but I think somebody says here enough. <laughs> Move to the Kisani. So these are the little plural ones. Hit. 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 Kisani. Hit. Saw. 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 Kisani. Saw. Kisani. Kook. 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 Kisani. Kook. Kisani. Te. Te. Is that, it goes low tone? Yes. Okay. So when you've got. There's this phenomenon that happens when you've got kisani and a few other instances. Uh, and, and another instance would be a verb where you've got verbi ye. And especially if you have a de verbi ye. And we'll talk about that structure. <laughs> but where that is called tone stealing, where if there's something that is forming this compound word, and you know, when you say kisani, that's sort of, you've got to treat it as one word. What happens is it flattens everything before it. And I don't know, you know, there's more research to do because it could be that those tones are still there. But, you know, like when you say, was away, all of those are high tone, but one of them is higher than the other. Right? And so this is, uh, in English we have stress, and in Clinkit you also have stress, but there hasn't been enough research yet on the relationship between stress and tone. Because there could be, there's probably multiple tones we can clink it, but we usually just mark one. It looks like I got a tape. Um, check tone. Okay, we're moving through. Sa. 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 Kisani. Sa. Kisani. Kuk. 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 Kisani. Kuk. Kisani. Te. <laughs> and these should be low as well. It gets fun. And the, the I right there has no real meaning. It's just chok kisani is hard enough. If you took that I out, you'd have chok san and you just couldn't recover, right? You'd just be sitting there struggling. So, any questions? So here's a set of pronouns, and we've expanded it from six. We're going to add a few more in here. And you should have a handle on these uh, just by, you know, and so some of the things you work on outside of class, we've talked about this. Uh, you know, there's really four realms for me of, of language learning. There's comprehension, and you get comprehension by listening to a whole bunch of things. You just have it around you all the time. It's just like when babies are around language, they just get language. It's just, they just get it. And you can do the same thing, except the English is always going to be like, you know, a spoiled brat that never gets enough attention. It's gonna be like, me, 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 me. So you've got to just sort of drown that out a little bit. You've got to find ways to surround yourself with the language. If you have speakers that you can go to, do that. If you don't, you'll find recordings and, and do that. Even if you're listening to the exact same recordings over and over and over, you know, you really got to push some of those things into your mind. Um, and then the second realm is speaking. And so you've got to find avenues, you know, so we do some in this class, and we're trying to keep doing more and more, where there's opportunities for you to produce the language. 
And so a lot of times I think you balance this between learners, where it's a little bit safer to just try things out. Um, and then you've got to speak to fluent speakers. You've got to find them and you've got to speak to them so that they can help. You know, are you able to understand what I'm saying? And sometimes you're going to get corrected, and sometimes you know it'll, it'll come in various different ways and times. Uh, but you've got to try and find those ways. And then also talk to yourself, talk to a dog, talk to a lamp, do, do whatever you can to keep yourself producing language. And you've got to create these scenarios where you said, if someone was here, I would tell them this. And I do this all the time. I'll walk around, and I'll just be talking. I'm like, oh, how would I say that? How would I say that? And so, um, you know, and you, but you've got to find ways to keep yourself in that mode as well. And then the other two realms are reading. So you should be reading some Clinkit, uh, and there's a, a whole bunch of stuff out there. It's a whole bunch of stuff. The, the Downhower Collections, Jeff Lear and Elizabeth Nyman's book. Um, and, and so there's lots of material out there. And then writing it so that you're listening to some Clinkit and you're writing it down, which we should be doing more of. I kept saying we were. We will. Uh, but you should really focus on those four realms, and they sort of surround this concept we call Shingitun Dutani. And Shingitun Dutani means you're also learning to think in Clinkit, not always just say, oh, well, how would I translate this from English? How would I translate this concept from English? And instead say, how would I think about this in Clinkit? A lot of it has to do with word order, the ways you might describe it, and the types of verbs that you're going to select to talk about some certain phenomenon. I find that as part that helps mm -hmm. trying to break down a Clinkit sentence, mm -hmm. to put it in the order that Clinkit puts it in, mm -hmm. instead of trying to translate it. And then that way, when you start, I find for myself when you start realizing or thinking of concepts, you're thinking in that order instead of in English order. Right? Because, yeah, you would say, like, hit de wu gu dwe ka. So you've got hit, house, de, towards, wu gu, he or she, wa, we ka, that guy. Right? So you can, so then in that case, you would say, house towards, but even, and it's interesting because if you say, like, he or she walked, when we got that ed thing at the end, that business gets taken care of in the prefix for clinkins. So yeah, but I think it's good. I think it's a really good exercise to practice Klingish, where you're just you're just switching the word order around. And so, um, and we'll look at more of how, how Klingit does this, and that helps to sort of diagram sentences, and also helps to put some sentences together. Okay. Any other tips and tricks or thoughts out there? <laughs> Where um, I think we focus a lot on like uh, Dallenhauer's work, and I then I, I downloaded the uh, one of Jeff Lear's work, and that was nice to get another another view, you know, on yeah. different sides, you know, because that you know well he uses a different writing system, which is kind of strange, but um, it was nice to get some new stuff, you know, look at really different, you know, stuff from the interior. Fun yeah, and, and so other things you can do is you can just, there's this other realm, you know, to try and balance yourself between being in Clinkit language and culture and being in Clinkit language and linguistics, you know, and, and it's just up to you where, where you feel most comfortable because there's lots of stuff you can read about uh, beginning Clinkit and, and these concepts and, and these other things and then trying to look at Clinkit people doing Clinkit things and describing them and stories. And then there's this other realm where you can really get super technical with the language. And then you can get into Jeff Lear's dissertation. And his verb notes are amazing. Even if you just flip through his verb notes, and you're just seeing all these different verbs. And you're seeing these notes on how they might be used. And there's a ton of cultural information in there as well. Like um, there is a verb for ceremonial dancing when you're dedicating a house. There's a specific verb for that. And so, and that verb exists only for that. And so, 
what happens is if we don't stay dynamic with clinket, everything is aklech. When there was, there's other specific, you know, there's sway songs, and then there's other types of things, and there's specific sort of things that we do, and so it's pulling nouns out of the, the downhowers, hatu nakugis, and so that's the other side is just always thinking about the cultural aspect, like why were these words used, and this is why things like aku need a lot of explanation because it's it's a little owl. But it's a little owl that, if you're not careful, like, you'll end up lost or dead. You know? And so it's, it's a very powerful spiritual thing. And it's not a negative thing. But it was something that a long time ago we had the Icht who could explain those things to us and translate what those things are communicating, which we don't necessarily have now. Not to say we won't, but we probably don't. Other thoughts? Okay, go through this list and then uh, we'll do a little bit more on suffixes and then we'll take a break and we'll do something a little different. So going through these, you know, independent possessive is what we're focusing on. When we use the possessive, we're going to use this term. Like if we say, ach ayi, or we say, ach ayi, ach ayi. So for that ayi, uh, it just means thing, just something. Um, and the, the best context would be either thinking of a toddler who says, my, or those little seagulls and finding Nemo. Right? They'd be like, but they'd have a get on there because they're kind of asking a question. So they'd be like, ah ayi a kwa, And so like, is that mine? Is that mine? And so ayi uh, is what we're going to use for the possessive pronoun. And these could also be body parts, or they could be kinship terms. Uh, but we should, this is our little bit, we're expanding our list a little bit more of ones that we're practicing. Chat. 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 Ach. 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 Uhan. Uhan. Ha. 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 Wa'eh. 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 Suffixes, you get rounded and unrounded, which tells you it's going to be an I or a U. We also have uh, unvoiced consonants that will change to voiced consonants. There's a, there's a list of them CH to J, T to D, TL to DL, TS to DZ, K to G, underline K to underline G, KW to GU, underline KW to underline GU. Hit. Hit. Ach hitty. Ach hitty. Sa. Sa. Ach sa ye. Ach sa ye. We also have this opposite tone thing going on. We get catch that rhythm. This is what gives us that thing that sounds like clinking. Kook. Kook. E kooku. E kooku. Te. Te te. Ye te ye. Ye te ye. Shit ta. Do shit on you. Do shit on you. Shake. Shake. A shake. A shake. Chalk. So now we're going to get into there's a, these other sets of what we call uh, locative, which is interesting because there's this underlying X business. Uh, which is a, a suffix, and it's what we call locative. 
there was another underlying X suffix, which we call locative, and they're <laughs> spelled exactly the same. Yeah. When I was teaching clinical linguistics, I said, here's your final. I'm going to put an underline X up there, and I was going to say, write whether it's locative or locative, and you'll get it wrong. <laughs> it's just interesting. It was like an interesting like cross-linguistic weird thing. But locative is uh, really sometimes you're putting something, and you're marking what the verb is specifically talking about. For example, if I said, um, so now you're saying, he or she is a sane fisher, right? So you can, and that, that thing could be anything. You could say, and then you could say, um, uh, or our food is our way of life. And then whatever that gets that locative is saying what that thing is. This is a member of that group. And what you'll find is when you have a locative for a verb, you can't separate that from the verb. So for example, I live in Ketchikan. So you, you couldn't really say like that wouldn't work. So you're trying to say my father a long time ago lived in Ketchikan. So instead you'd say um, or you could say now, as far as word order in Clinket, there well, are... Huh? What determines if it's an underlined X or a pinched X? So the, the pinched X would be to reside somewhere. Oh, okay. The underlined X oh, I see. would be... There's two different ones. One of them was marking the group. So you could say... Yeah, it's a member of that group. But if you said... That's saying, I, I go there repeatedly, or I go all around there. And so there's two different types. And we just got to recognize which one is which. The locative is really it's kind of rare. It's not used very much at all. But the locative is there as well sometimes. So you could say, He or she made a chair. But you could say, he or she used a rock or a chair. So sometimes there's little subtle differences that the locative is going to introduce, and the verb itself might not change that much. And then word order, when we get to word oops, when we get to word order in Clinket, it's fairly negotiable. Like you can't separate certain things because it's considered part of the verb phrase. But you could say, like say, Kitchhan Yeyati. He or she lives in Ketchikan. And then if you had ach um, ish, and then if you had putan, like in the summer. Now the, the, the order that you present these things is you're going to present the most important information first. Right? So example, if someone says, where does your father live? You might say, ach ish awek kichchan yeyeti. Or you could say, kichchan yeyeti ach ish. Um, because of the conversation, we're saying, well, where does your mother live? Well, where does your father live? Well, where does your uncle live? But then it was saying, where does your father live now? Because he's moved around. Because he's a rolling stone, right? Because then you would say, kichchan yeyeti. Now, and there's other, there's other types of things, you know, and we'll get to that as you pay attention to Clinket. It likes to front load things. It says, this is the most important thing. And that's how you sort of start thinking about your future sentence constructions. You know, What is that most important thing that you're communicating? And sometimes it depends on the question that's being, uh, that's being asked. OK, so I think we have one more list, and then we'll uh, take a break. So here's some different ones, and we'll look at these in the next chapter, how they specifically function. Uh, but these are it's another set of suffixes that can attach to nouns. And as you attach them to nouns, remember you can attach them to kinship terms, and you cannot attach them to names. Like you can't say, de, 
<laughs> you just can't say that, or you can't say ita de. You can't you can't say that because in Klingit you just think of like you're just gonna run straight into that person, and it's just, it's just awkward. And we'll talk about how to take care of that. It's pretty it's pretty straightforward, um, and we'll talk about that after the break. Hit 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 de. Hit de. Hit de. So again, open. Ended syllable on the suffix opposite of the tone before. Sa. 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 Ka. Sa. Same thing. Hit ka. So that would go down. Kuk. Kuk. Kuk da. Kuk da. Here you have a closed suffix. It's got a consonant on each side, so it's going to be high. It won't affect the vowel necessarily. So this is how you would take care of going towards a person or attaching one of these directional relational suffixes to a person. We'll talk about first so on the table. Break down me, you, towards. Well, ach, i, de. So this would just be towards me. Mm -hmm. And it's taken care of with this e thing, and we call it the empty base. It doesn't mean anything. All it does is it allows us to attach a suffix onto it. So you could say i, e, de. And what we get is we get a possessive pronoun plus e plus a suffix. And we're going to see this in a bunch of places when things are going to and from people. And some of this is just conceptually. Like, tell me. Ach in kananik. Tell me. Do in kananik. Tell him or her. in kakkwanik. I'm going to tell her. I'm going to tell you. So it's kind of like the egg though. It is. It is. And so it's just. It's, it's not. It's not the yeah. or ye. Yeah, it's e, and it's usually going to be long and low. Uh, sometimes it goes high, right? E eat kuwaha. That same thing right there doesn't mean anything, but it just allows us to attach the suffix because you can't say chat <laughs> de, right? It's just weird. Yeah, but there are instances where you're going to use an object pronoun. So you could say, Chet kasachan, love me. Right, so you can, you can say stuff like that. OK, break time. 10 minutes. Be realistic. And this El Capitan when you move here. Now it's, like it's huge. I know, yeah. <laughs> I think it's supposed to be if you lose it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It happens to me all the time. Well, yeah, split screen. It's tiny. Yeah. Oops. I didn't even pay attention. I was asking questions. Um. Ah, I gotta get this book. Out the door. Last new language center is going to publish it. I'm not going to get done with my edits. At least they're all pretty small. Slides beneath. Because you sit on it. It's, like it's, it's doing the slide. So the conceptual stuff gets really fun. We like compound nouns. So C D K and things like that. Hmm. 
Lance, are you still there? Yes. How do I do that pinched underlined X? How do I get that to happen? I know once it happens, I'll have it, but I just can't get it. Oh. I, it, I used to know how. Uh, it's probably, it's up there with the, the trickiest sounds, with the, the pinched regular X. I think one trick might be to look up and to make the X sound. And while you're making that sound and looking up, which tends to relax your throat, try to shut it off. Sorry, I didn't mean to do that. So if you're looking up and making that sound and you make it stop, and so what you're trying to do is if you pay, if you really focus on when you make that sound, it's sort of up, kind of right behind your nose is where you're making that sound. It's in between your mouth and your nose. And what you need to do is get that thing to ring without using your lungs. So you're using your throat is turning into a piston. And making that noise on its own. Sometimes what helps is just making the regular underline X and then trying to pretend like you're shutting off some valve. So. And so it ends up with a little bit of a push through at the end. And I think also this is an area where sometimes just listening to a lot of clinkets. Uh, helps because then your body just sort of gets used to making those sounds uh, and, and to just not worry if, if it comes out and it's not as uh, grindy sort of as it should be I wouldn't worry about it at all. Sometimes you make funny sounds. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it'll come out. <laughs> that was helpful. Thank you. Uh -huh. Have a great day. Oh, there's a job at SHI. Yeah, there's like four. Exhibits curator. Mm -hmm. I could do that. <laughs> well, if you look at the job description, it's quite a bit. Oh, as well.
would like to use to talk about decolonization, but I'm not sure if it works. Thanks, Cheech Kabuch, for answering the question. I didn't see it. So those of you who are using uh, this particular book, this Hausene Chayu Chetangi, I updated it last night. Uh, the final update should be done soon. And then it'll just sort of be what it is with all the little spelling errors and goofiness. Or at least it's down to little tiny things. I mean, little things can be big deals if you got them totally wrong. This is getting close. Uh, any questions? Okay. We're not another, what did I say, 10 minutes? Wait one more minute. <laughs> All right, so the last thing in this chapter is talking about compound nouns. And compound nouns are really, there's there's a lot to it here. Um, I just found something else too. So when we get to compound nouns, we really see how Clinkett tends to put some different things together. Uh, and so there's a number of different ways to look at this. And one, one thing is when, when we make a compound noun and clink it, uh, there's a number of things that happen. One is all the vowels, except for the last word, all those vowels tend to go short and low. Uh, not all the time. Sometimes you'll see them stand long. But it's generally the trend. So chok, which is a long, high vowel, is <coughs> reduced to chok here. Chakini. And so this is one thing that we see. And then the I here, I consider it totally like a relational thing, not because you could say chakini. And you could be referring to this eagle who's in possession of some water. That kind of thing could happen. But really, you're just talking about an eagle river, just like we would say in English. Uh, but looking at how these unpack is kind of interesting. So askatu yik means in the forest. Kati. So it's the dog in the forest. So there's the word for coyote. Uh, but again, everything gets shortened and flattened. And sometimes these words look really long. But if you can see how they're put together, I think that does help you to, to help to remember them and to use them. So here you have ach at dushat. Uh, so here, you get a little bit of uh, vowel flattening right here. Uh, but here you have ach, which is a combination of a uh and ch. And this ch here is instrumental. So there's two different ch suffixes that you're going to see. One that could attach to a noun to specify who is doing something. right? So you could say, we do shcha we just in case it's not clear, because you could say we you could technically you could say douche a wa a wacha we and it's kind of a weird word order, it's a weird concept because 
mice don't eat cats usually, but the cat can eat the mouse. So the CH is called an ergative marker, and sometimes if you have multiple nouns in a particular sentence, the verb itself is going to mark uh, subject and object using pronouns, but if in the case you've got third person and third person, sometimes you've got to clarify. Right? And then there's another CH which is marking an instrument. So in this case you could say which is kind of awkward. Let's just say uh, he hit him or her with a cup, right? So this is saying what the verb is being done with. And that's the one that you've got here. So with it, at something, duscha, somebody, at, uh, somebody eats, thing. So the thing that somebody eats something with, right? And so Klinke gets really into like things, right? Something, someone, and it does a lot of stuff with that, especially when you start naming things, which is why you'd have like atunach chadish atki at. The du in there is saying somebody does it or it happens. Here's another one, achkushchit ayit. So ach again is this instrumental. Kaushchit a is the thing that slides. The at is below, the thing below, because you're sitting on it, and it's sliding. You're not sliding, you're just sliding below. Another thing that you see is sometimes things will get at uh, Other speakers might say at yet and that would literally mean something's children, but it always refers to humans. It's always people's children. Uh, And then akahehi, you also some other things that you'll see is this is just taken directly from a verb. It means the person, you know, planting things. And sometimes what we see, and we'll get into this when we start talking more about verbs, is you'll see verbs that have open endings will often change their shape. So we go from ha to he, and those types of things are fairly common. Beetle, and also a spider. So this would mean the women in the forest. And I don't know. You know. Someday I'll figure it out. Someday someone will tell me, or I'll figure it out. Uh, why these particular names? And sometimes there's meaning. Sometimes you know. Sometimes it's obvious thinking of the thing. Sometimes it is. Isn't kanasat? Yeah, kanasat is another. You know, and it's another word. And, and there's there's still more work to do with small birds and insects and things because. Sometimes it's tough to figure out which one is actually which one um, in terms of documenting it. And I think if we were using lots of pictures a long time ago, and we're always using pictures, then we would probably have better ideas. Mm -hmm. Is Kutuyuk ID also spider? Maybe. That one might also Maybe you ever take a picture of a bird? It's going to be hard to be in there for a minute and a half. Hold it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but there are there are bird photographers who have gigantic lenses. Yeah, but I'm talking about the bird. Yes. Right. <laughs> right when I had to hold still for like three seconds. Askan uh, Shachi. And so sometimes we get weird combinations and, and some maybe there's something different too. A lot of these are my the, the best guesses that I could get looking through a number of different resources, primarily uh, Jeff Lear's Clinkett STEM list, which has this wonderful resource if you learn how to use it. And then Atcha Dakahiti. So there's Dakahiti, which is the house around something. And then you can have Atcha, Koch, Dana, a bunch of different things on there. Chichuwaya, it's a it looks like a porpoise, so we see that uwa ya ending that we we did with our adjectives. Chuck is there's that one. Da uh, da kashu around his or her ending. So there, you know we get these really interesting. Uh, I don't know what the cock is on there. That's certainly 
seems like there's a verb in there. The kind of or the kian the person above. This is a post-contact term for the Christian God. It's typically what this is. Hashaginya is the older one, and it has the nya in the uh, built into it. Dischusi is a moonbeam, and it means under the foot of the moon. Each kakwei, marker on a each. Each is the term for a large rock that is submerged in the water. And it, in my mind, it usually means the tide goes above and below or up and down on it. So this, I don't think it would, it might work for sub, totally submerged big rocks, but I'm suspicious it doesn't. Gandadakuku, very fun word. So again, we've got wood around the verb to peck at something. Um, the woodworm, worm inside of the wood. The tongue that comes out of the, the fire. Uh, a captive or a prisoner. The bear that's in the water. The uh, Dancer in the water. Hit hit kakuku. Paper on the or membrane comes from membrane. Paper on the house. Hit taigatsi. Hit below house posts. The house posts underneath the house. Hundakihiti store the building around selling things. Jakoina. So this comes from which is to wipe something. So it's the one that wipes hands, the one that wipes nose, the one that wipes on a face. And then we get it with body parts too. And we did a few of these. The child of the, the bottom of the hand is right in the center of the palm. It's the center of the palm, not just the palm. The, the remnants of his or her uh, possession or hands. And that's somebody's artwork or you know handiwork. A the thing on which on which someone washes things. Are you okay? Okay. So you're going to have a chance to uh, share some things, uh, but first we're going to run through a couple of different terms. So there's these different relational terms. Uh, we call them directional and relational terms. And this is, so now we're, we're, we've sort of figured out what nouns can do, how we can goof around with them, and now we start moving on to a couple other realms. And this, the whole idea is to get us ready to talk about verbs. We're not putting verbs off, but we're getting ourselves ready because the verbs are the most dynamic part of clinking. There's lots of rules around these other things, uh, but you know we can learn those rules. When we get into verbs, there's a lot more stuff to keep track of. So we can see So what we're going to see here is there's a couple of directional relational terms that are built into these sentences that help us understand how the language is functioning. So when we're talking about space, time, direction, and sometimes concepts, there's these three different but related terms that we use. And, and this is how I look at them. Other people might look at them differently. We could all call these just relational terms, which means they just sort of they talk about how these things relate to each other. Um, or they talk about fixed locations in the Clinket universe. So the first thing is an independent base. An independent base is a word that stands alone. It can take on a suffix. Um, and it usually refers to a fixed direction, right? Niche. That is, that's the beach. That's where it is. Uh, the key, that's up above. The yi, that's down below. It doesn't need anything to relate to because we know where these spaces are. Dock is inland. Dock is out to sea. 
So what we see with this is it fixes us in the Clinkit universe, these different, um, these independent bases. The second type is a relational base, which is how two things are related. So instead of just saying above or below, inland, out to sea, now we have uh, around the building, on the table, below my shoes, you know, whatever. So then now it needs a possessing noun or pronoun, right? And we can have person, we can use pronouns for this. You could say, achdat, achdat katnik. People are talking about me, right? I'm being talked about. Uh, and you could also say, achkatsu dakusatan. It's raining on me. It, you know, um, and so what we get is we get placeholders a lot, especially ah. Uh, and sometimes you can use these, uh, and you learn how to be more dynamic with these. Like you could say, for example, We were talk, we we're talking about. Right. I could say We're talking about the Klingit language. So sometimes you're going to substitute things in there. Sometimes you're just going to use it with the ah. It depends, you know. But I think generally. You move toward, because sometimes I think the progression of speakers is a lot of times you're using up when you could be using just the noun, right? For example, you could say, I'm thinking about basketball, right? Um, but you could just say, you don't need the up in there. The last one is a suffix, and a suffix can attach to an independent base, a relational base. Um, there is a fourth one, which I put, I guess, in this, which is a relational noun. A relational noun, uh, it, needs, it needs a possessor, but it cannot take on a suffix, whereas the base can take on a suffix. And then the suffix just, and we'll look at the different things that these do. There's big, huge lists of them. Uh, but it, it's a finite list, you know, and there's some of them that are used more often than others, and we're going to start with those ones. So uh, English has what we call prepositions, right? So through the door, on the table, towards the house, after a while. Clinkit uses postpositions, and so you always got to think of them as coming after. So one thing you could practice with your Klingish is you could use them for after. So you could say, um, I'm going store two, right? And then you just drop your you drop your article, forget it. <laughs> I'm going store two, right? And so someone says, oh, where were you? You say, uh, movie from I walked, right? And so you can you can really get mysterious with your English. Uh, it messes people up. You right. must be yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and it's not quite Yoda, but it's, it's, getting, it's getting close to that realm. So, you know, door through, table on, house towards, a while after. And we just keep in mind that these things, they need to have that relating now, right? And we've talked about this, right? Because you can't say, if someone says, where are my glasses? You can't say on. Right? You have to say on something. Nadak kavu, nadak kavu. They're on the table. So the first thing is we'll revisit these determiners. We've done this before. Everybody repeat after me. Yeah. 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 He. He. We. We. You. You. So we've, we're closer to the speaker ourselves if we are the speaker, and we're farther away. Yeah is also immediately. We could be now or at any other time. You is usually long time from now, long time. Yeah, so here's our little, here's our little crab. He's right next to me. Yeah, it's ow. Yeah, it's ow. Hey, it's ow. Hey, it's ow. Wait, it's ow. Wait, it's ow. You, it's ow. You, See, so he's kind of closer to me than to you. He's kind of right over there, and then he's way over there. There's a thing on the right hand side. Shakia. Yeah, it's a Shakia. It's an illustration. So here we go. This is the speaker, right? Ya, he, we, 
U. So U is this big outside space, right? So everything far away could be the moon, could be Skagway, could be, you know, it's these, and it could be these sort of unknown areas as well. There's another one which is Ha, which we're going to get to. And sometimes there's an N on there, sometimes there isn't. And this is what when you say Haku, Hade, Yike Hakikudi, that's the Ha. And that means this area around us as a group. Not just me as the speaker, but us as a group. And it's more of a vicinity than um, a specific sort of closer and farther. Okay, so now we're going to get to our list of suffixes, and we're going to see these, and we're going to learn how to spot these. We're going to get back into our Raven story and play a little bit more of spot the verb, spot the, spot the suffix. What are all these different parts that you see? And some of these, they can contract or they appear in different forms. Uh, so, for example, duck, 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 duck. Dach. 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 The most common contraction you'll see is, a, is an open-ended word. It will sometimes contract to a T, underline X. So, for example, you could say, Hit dach. Hit dach. Hit dach. Hit dach. So that would be from the lake. Uh, and there is a form that's not very common, which would really just be a a low tone x. Uh, uh. For some reason, there's this other contraction that goes on there, and this is from. It's most commonly from, right? Like I came from. It, you know, this person was walking from. I got this out of this thing, uh, and it could also be since, right? Like since you could say talk. Talk ach, talk adach ayah. Since winter, we've been doing whatever. Okay. You could say so. You could say like eighteen, eighteen, eighteen dach, eighteen dach, kunak kadeit. Yes, eighteen dach kunak kadeit awuchut mekha. That guy drug the kunak kadeit out of the salt water. Although it was in a little lake, I think. So. We could play duck, duck, cook. Duck, duck, chook. Yeah. Duck, duck, goo, duck, And so these ones, the suffixes, and so we write these with a hyphen on the front because they need to attach to something, right? So same, same type of business, right? Like someone, if they said, "Where are you going?" It's to, right? And you could again, it's very mysterious. But in Clinket, it's nonsensical. So, ah uh, takes the place. So you could say, ah dach, ah dach right? He, he came out of, he walked out from there. He walked from there. Ah dach You can also insert nouns there, right? So where are some places we could dach from? Askatu dach wu gu. So here's, uh, let me put a little note up here so you can see. Here's my little sticky note. If I can make this big. Let me see if I can make this bigger. Hold on. Okay, so we are going to Dachwugut. Uh, somebody translate that Dachwugut for me. He or she walked from. He or she walked from. Okay, so let's all think of oops, things where we can. He or she can Dach from. So we had Aska to Dachwugut. He or she walked out of the woods. What else? Well, you gotta say, Hun Dakehiti Dach Wugut. 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 Hun Dak
In a Say it again. In uh, So there again, so you can have It's a possessive form for your home. Dach can come after that possessive marker. Wugud. He or she came from your house. They take all your stuff? What's going on? I'm just kidding. Okay. Out of the sea? Yeah. Yeah. Eight. Yeah. Eight. Eight. He or she walked out of the ocean. Okay. Yeah. He or she walked from the beach. Sheesh. Who hasn't gone yet? Oh, I said duck, duck, ka, duck, wugud. Duck, ka, duck, wugud. So then you've got duck, ka. So what's going to happen with ka is if you attach something to it, it's going to go long. Duck, ka, duck, wugud. He or she walked from the interior. Kuwuch. Nech, duck, wugud. Nech, duck, wugud. He or she came from home. Okay. Uh, okay, can you say it one more time? Okay. What did I say? Is it Klek Gidi? Yes. Klek Gidi. Is that a snowstorm? Oh, Klek Gidi. Klek Gidi. Yeah. Okay. Goodness, she, she, he or she walked out of the snowstorm. So, like, the kind of. And there's a couple of other ones that we use, too, when we get into motion verbs. Like, Gagi is a, something that is used a lot, which means to emerge, like somebody, you know, so this one you might even say, and the, the verb changes a little bit because the type of motion is there, but for somebody to emerge, and this one is used a lot when you say, when you're, you're in this special spiritual moment, you say, our ancestors have emerged and they have joined us. And they're, they're really powerful phrases to use in, in Klinkit. Um, and we'll talk about, so when we're looking at these relational suffixes, they are also going to tell us what type of movement we have. Because we love our OCD Klinkit, and it's always just categorizing everything. It's like, you're this type of thing. You're that type of thing. Um, so for now, but yeah, those are good. Dach, So now we're going to day wugud. So now that we've dach wuguded, we're going to day wuguded. It's going to mess up all my grammar. So the thing that we've got here, uh, wugut, is the a verb form for he or she walked, right? And so uh, day, dach is always going to be high. Day is going to be the opposite of the previous vowel. So now we're going to go towards. So de is towards. Um, until, so, so you could say, uh, we're going to eat until springtime, right? Or in the manner of, so that one needs a little bit of explanation, because sometimes we're going to use this thing, in Klinkit, and it has very special uses in verbs. We'll get to that later. For now, let's just have somebody, they will go somewhere. Where is he or she going to wugood? Or where did he or she wugood? De shu hit de wugood. De shu hit de wugood. So you go, de shu hit de wugood. Okay? At ha daka hit de wugood. At ha daka hit de wugood. So here we've got the tone thing doing. 
they were good. And there you've got hit, which is high, but you've got hitti. So the I, which is a relational, goes low. And since that one's low, the next suffix is going to go high. Okay. Shkunde wugut. Shkunde wugut. He or she went to school. Where else? Is that him? Kuch. Okay, let's try it one more time. So I'm going to mute myself because it was cutting out. E devugut. E devugut. To the rapids? Okay. Scary. Who's next? Askatu devugut. Askatu devugut. You went to the woods. In yat devugut. In Yatibu. One more time. In Yatibu. In Yatibu. Went up to the edge of the water. Okay. In Yatibu. So you've got Ya and you've got the T. Yatibu. Okay. Pashuk or Tubushetsin Khu. On day wugut. On day wugut. He or she went to the village or the town. Some of this is context, right? It depends on if you're out of town. That means going to town, right? Okay. Shaganen day wugut. Shaganen. Shaganen. Hechesegu shaken. That's the way. What is that word? It's dumped us. They walk toward tomorrow. <laughs> oh. But yeah, we're getting a little metaphorical. But yeah, you could say Sekhanen Day Wugu, which would mean they're going to walk until tomorrow. Sekhanen Day Wugu. He or she will walk until tomorrow. Which, yeah, or he and, huh. Wouldn't you have to say, Sekan and de yana. Good. You'd probably have to change the, the verb form. So you'd say, he or she is walking until tomorrow. Yeah. And so some of these uh, for the wugut uh, might work better if we just stick to a place. Uh, okay, so nach. Is through something or along or via or in including that time of. Uh, this one is, is a little bit interesting. Uh, mostly it kind of means through, but it could also mean along. And, and it, these can pair with other things, like we'll see kanach quite a bit, which means um, it can mean going over the top of the water. Kanach could also mean going over, like to. Is kanach with jakein we wasus, right? So the cow jumps over the moon. So it could also be over. Uh, yeah, yeah. Shal kanach They walked over the mountain, and so it doesn't. It, it could mean to be in contact, or it could mean to go directly over it. You know, it depends. Um, so you could you could nach same thing we can attach that onto a noun. There's the letter t, which usually means to arrive at, right? So this is where things get a little interesting because you could say hit day wugut, he or she went to the house, or you could say hit wugut, he or she made it to the house. And what we're getting into here is the way that Clinket looks at directions. And when, in the way that Clinkit looks at motion, when we deal with motion in Clinkit, 
you have the motion that comes to an end, you have motion that is just ongoing, not to say it never ends, but you're not specifying an end, you have upward motion and downward motion. And it takes care of them all differently, but you've got, a, got those four main types of motion, and you've always got to think, well, what type of motion is that? Because that'll tell you how to conjugate the verb. There's this, and so when you say, like, the letter T, like, nadaukkat achkuhida, so nadaukkat achkuhida yi, what you're typically talking about here is my pencil has arrived on the table, right? So usually when you're using the cut, it involves there's some sort of motion or it has to do with arriving there or sort of uh, being at a point at times. It's most commonly I think of it as arriving and it has to do with like it's now there and it wasn't there for very long. The w or the u uh, we've used gu su ya du we do, he do, you do. So with those ones, we've been using this u. Uh. So for example, someone could say, Gusu ita, ne she's at home. Someone calls you on the phone, Gusu ne I am at home. So the thing with this w uh or u uh is it's is, are, at, you know. And we say that because it's used when there's no verb in this in the phrase. So, for example, It's on the table. But you can't say, you couldn't say something like, uh, You can't do that because now you're getting into a verb for something to be somewhere. You'd say, Right? Or you could say nadok kat yeyeti. So it has arrived there. So this one is a special one. It's used without any verbs. Now we get into the or the. In some case, it could be ah ah yeyeti. But usually you're going to have a. So then in this case, we'll use this one. Or I'll do yeyeti. We're going to have something. And this is usually translated as to reside somewhere or to live somewhere. So this doesn't have to be you. This will be, again, a he or she, some third person that we're gabbing on about. Where can they reside? Clanket place names would be fun. But they don't have to be. Let's give some examples. Disney on Disney on Yeya tea the Casa Yeye could sing. Where else? Nescata Hinik Yeye tea. Say Yeye and a cup. Nescata Hinik Yeye tea. Nescata Hinik Yeye tea. Living at Let's get the heeny. Okay. Haguksa. Mars Kayati. Mars Kayati. Way Martian. Matt Damon. <laughs> Mars Kayati. Okay. Gusu, Gusa, Gauk, Yeti, Gauk, Yeti, Zayin in time. Zayin in time, we're in the drum. I'm living in the drum. <laughs> that concept be like living in the moment? Hmm. I don't know. Gauk. Where else? Give me a couple more. And I'll give you on, one. On Yeyeti. On Yeyeti. He or she is in town, right? Or on a village or on the land. Yeah. Could you say Yeet Dut? 
Yeah, yeah, that mm, maybe to say like living in the now. I don't know if it. I don't know if it would work like that. We could say, um, and this this business is really neat the way it works for time because you could say how a what. And that means, and if you're telling a story, that would be like, it's winter, right? It is winter. Talk yeyati, talk yewuti. It was winter. So you could use it in far, as far as time references go. There's another. There's these other certain combinations that work really well, and they're sort of um, proverbs or these they're these cultural meaning things. So you could say, gaudan. Living in the horses, something. So Tai is beneath. So you say he or she is beneath the horse's tail. And that's the same for like somebody's really intoxicated. Right? It's not a good thing to be like him. Yeah. And it's, yeah. Okay, so moving on, get away from the horse's tail. You have, so again, we talked about this locative one. This one is location. It's a locational suffix, it's a relational suffix. And it means it could have a couple of different things. So if you said, uh, it came off of the top of the table. It's going on to the top of the table. Nedauk <laughs> kanach. It went right over the table. Nedauk kat. It came to rest. It arrived on top of the table. Nedauk kavu. It's just on the table. Nedauk kach. It's it lives on top of the table or it resides there. Nedauk kach. And that could mean it comes there repeatedly. Right, like I don't know, some bug keeps flying around and landing on the table, or it could be moving around on the table. The story of Nasikane, you were under the water. Mm -hmm. That's a different relational term than actually going. Like, somebody drowned. And he went. What? Oh yeah, to say like to go. So there, when we get into these durations, these. We look at how Clinket looks at space and time, and we always think about that because it's different. So in, when we're in the stories, like the Raven story, the Natsushane story, a lot of times they'll say, um, It's like he picked it up, mm -hmm. and he walked underneath the ocean. So you've got But then if somebody is to go into the water, there's like two ways of going into the water. You could say, uh, and there's multiple ways. The first one is whether you're going hin yik or hin talk. And the way it's been explained to me is hin yik means it's not deep enough to submerge in, right? So it's kind of below the knees. Because even if it's up to the knees, you could submerge if you went flat. Mm -hmm. If you went flat, you could go underneath the water. And submerge yourself, and that's heen talk. And then you could say heen talked would mean to arrive at the bottom of what. And so talk means the bottom of a cavity. Mm -hmm. But it could be like you're just anywhere in between the surface and the bottom. But if somebody sank, there would be ways to say they, they sank all the way to the bottom of the ocean. So Raven would tip, and we would talk. Yeah, yeah. So Raven, Raven would tie ye day. He would go under the water because it's, he, in the stories he's walking around on the bottom of the ocean. And there's lots of those stories too. Natsushane, when he goes, there's different versions. He's either with the seals or the sea lion, and he's walking with them. He's just walking around on the bottom of the ocean. And then there's another one I think where there was a kushta nakahiti at the bottom of the ocean, and somebody went in there as well. And they came dancing in, and they had king crab shells for their drums. You know, listen to that story sometimes. 
So we'll, we'll keep working on this next week. Look at this chapter. Look at these lists. What we're going to do is we're going to draw some pictures, and we're going to practice going from places to places, and then talking about going from in two different places. So we'll think of, uh, we'll draw a little sort of a town on our um, dry erase board, and we'll have like, and we'll think of some different places we might go in our little in our little towns, and we'll practice going to and from these different places, and we'll look at how these different things work in terms of these relational terms, and there's lots of them to go you know, between things, on top of things, and Clinkit has some special relationships there, and I will also highlight some ones that have really special uses in the language. Any other questions? Thoughts? We'll talk a little bit next week, too, about your midterm projects, which are, again, creating an autobiographical poster and telling us about it in Clinkit. So you're, what did I say, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 10, 30 minutes? So it should, be, minutes. should be about 10 minutes of language. And I, I don't want to hear an introduction, like the standard Clinkit introduction. I, I want it to go beyond that. We, we should. We know how to do that. We'll practice doing that a little bit more. And then if you have specific phrases or things that you're looking for, certainly let me know. We'll have a chance to practice them here. Um, and then we'll talk about how to start using these different resources to craft your own sentences that you might be looking for. Um, Finish. Ah, uh, okay, you're